So Dylan is right. I did, I interviewed these ladies kind of quickly on the phone just to get them prepped for this. And there is something that all of them are doing and it's working. It's just working every single day or Monday through Friday at least. They're putting the time in. There are some secret things that they're doing or there's some tips and tricks that they will share with us. But the thread is that they show up and in that first year of real estate, which so many of us, including myself, did not do, and that's going to work every day and treating it like a full-time job. So first of all, these are all three really special ladies. They come from different backgrounds. Lonnie, okay, great, you guys have your own mic. This is Lonnie. Lonnie, real quickly, where are you from and how did you get into real estate? Because this is just year one, you guys. Yes. Um, I'm originally from Oahu, and I moved here on the Big Island uh, many moons ago after graduation. Um, I visited here all the time, so I loved it. I knew I wanted to start my family here, so this is a great place to raise our family. Um, when I was growing up, my father was a handyman, and he would go help fix up houses before it gets sold, and he would take us along. And then we would also go on the open houses, and so me and my brother would run through the house, pick our rooms, and I, said, I would sell my brother his room, you know, and things like that. So it was always something in me that I really wanted to do. Uh, but having children, raising families, I needed to find a stability in bringing in a stable paycheck. Put food on the table, raise the kids. So I didn't do it until my kids are big. You wouldn't know, but I have adult children. Yeah. Uh, so now is my opportunity to actually pursue what I wanted to do from small kid time. Okay, great. And Lonnie, you were, you came to us working from where? Yeah, I had a nine to five corporate job. Okay. Yeah, for 20 plus years. Okay. And, and now you that the could, kids are older. I asked you, you could see there's a ceiling to this job. Yes, yes. And that was uncomfortable to you. It was. Uh, I worked just as hard as I started from day one. And for the past two years, or the last two years of my job, I didn't even get a raise for what I was doing. And so I had to figure something out, either that or just sit and be comfortable with that. Right. I don't think anybody would want to be comfortable with that, especially now that we have the opportunity. Sky's the limit. Okay, so Soraya, you come to us from all over the world, basically. A lot of travel, right? French in France and Tunisia, yep. and you have a mother who is um, a French diplomat, is that right? Yes. Okay, tell us a little bit how you got here in your journey into real estate. Sure. Um, so I'm French in Tunisia, and my mom is a diplomat for the French government, and so my dad is a teacher, so we, they basically have contracts every four years, so we traveled the world growing up, so that was pretty nice. Um, and she had a contract in Washington, D.C., so that's how I got to the U.S. And over there, there is no public French school. So I went to the American public school, and I knew, like... The Barely sky, any English. The sky, she was in high school. Yeah, the sky is blue, like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> the nothing. sky is blue. Yeah. Um, and how long did it... You had one year in high school where you learned English, and by the next year... That's right. You were in, taking AP English. Right. So... So I went to college in Pennsylvania. Um, I studied chemical engineering and biomedical engineering. So I went to Texas, worked in the oil industry, and I met my husband there who grew up in Hawaii. So for years was like, we need to live in Hawaii. You have no idea how dreamy it is. I was like, I don't. <laughs> so we came on vacation. I was sold immediately and um, Soraya told me she had one experience. She got here, she jumped into the bay, and there were like 30 dolphins underneath there. And she was like, I'm done. I'm here. This is it. We're moving here. Right? Basically, yeah. Okay. And it's real. Like, this is a real story that happened. Um, and basically, so for two years, we kind of saved up, um, bought some properties while we were still in Texas, and started investments, right? Kind of like Ashley started doing it, um, Airbnbs and stuff like that, and decided okay, I can retire at 26, so I just left and came here to Hawaii. Amazing. But you didn't retire. You got into real estate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Kahea. Hi. 
local girl from east side of the island. Um, yes, so I grew up on the big island. Um, um, I grew up in Keao and in the HPP area, um, my early childhood. <laughs> um, through high school, I lived in Hilo. Um, after graduation, I moved, um, I lived along the Hamakua coast. Um, I now live in Kamuela, where I settled down, started a family, and we built our first home. Cool. So, and you, Kahea, ha were working um, also at a corporate job at Foodland, right, for, as a manager. Yeah, so I worked at Foodland for about 12 years before real estate. Um, it was so convenient, um, you know, just with the kids. It was close to work, close to home, close to the school. Um, as they started getting older, I realized, you know, um, is this what I really want to do for the rest of my life? You know, you know, I had this opportunity to go out and actually, you know, just do something a little bit more fulfilling. So I definitely took the leap of faith. Um, COVID helped with that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was at a point where, you know, I'm not going to let have not let anyone have authority over my life and i just went for it kahe explained she saw her boyfriend waking up every morning and he was so happy and happy to go to his job and she was you know she was questioning yeah. I, why yeah. don't i have yeah. that i, I want was like that. i would like just look at him every morning and he's just so thrilled to go to work he would never complain <laughs> and i was here waking up just grumbling like oh my god i have to go back there you know and i just wanted to feel what he was feeling so so when each of them got into real estate i asked the question once you made the choice i'm going to try real estate lonnie did you have a plan b absolutely not right <laughs> soraya once you made the choice that you were doing real estate full-time do, do you have a plan b no okay no. kahea no. and kahea got to a point where she what dylan likes to describe it as she burned the boats that was it she went in full time and didn't look back and just had faith in what she was doing and decided I have no other plan so it's sink or swim and look at they're definitely swimming you guys so amazing okay so yeah go ahead Lonnie although if you guys can reference and relate the duck picture you guys ever saw that we're swimming but we're cool and calm and collected sometimes but we're kicking like hell underneath totally. <laughs> most of the time we all in are. the beginning of our careers right because yeah. we're still learning but definitely still above water <laughs> okay um so i'll just ask real quickly the first year in real estate where did lonnie where did your leads come from um i would have to say most most of it was from zillow okay uh definitely my first lead came straight out of the team um, I was super fortunate to, mm -hmm. you know, they asked, hey, do you want this lead? Yes. That was the only answer, right? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And Soraya, what percentage was Zillow for you? Like 50%. 50. Yeah. Okay. So that's a lot, but also it's not that much for first year on our team. So what, what were you doing to get 50% of leads that were not Zillow leads? What was your, what were you doing? I'm horrible. I, uh, no. <laughs> any friends I had in a place that I was selling, Okay. I texted it to them. So I was like, oh, hey, did you know your neighbor is selling for blah, blah, blah? And wow, that's a record in this building. And I was just harassing people. <laughs> like, hey, what do you Great. think about that? Like, how much is yours worth? You know, kind of like that. Okay. Um, and so I got like three listings doing that. That's amazing. Yeah. And then uh, the other, that's, so that's probably 30%. And the other 20% were referrals from Dylan. Yeah. Right. And Kahea, where did most of your leads come from? 95% um, it was from Zillow. Okay. Yeah. So um, Zillow leads are amazing, but we do take a cut, but it just shows in that first year, you they did the leads, they worked the leads, and it was a way for them to get into the business and get it done, and now they have a client list. I mean, 16 transactions in a year, 12 transactions in a year. If you do the work and you take the Zillow leads and you work them, you're building something. So that's amazing. And then the lead follow-up. What were you doing specifically, Lonnie, to follow up with your leads that you got from, from Zillow and elsewhere? I definitely jumped on the training that Kelly held for KB Corp. Okay. Um, get your drip campaign set up. Make sure that it's constantly touching 
all of my leads. Um, but what, what was really helpful for me is actually calling them. Right. So <laughs> because all because three of these ladies say yeah, this. Yes. They get on the phone. It was actually calling them because you can easily text, you can easily email, right. but they cannot feel your vibe and they cannot get the gist of you um, if you don't speak to them. Right. And then they know, hey, this is a real this is a real person. Right. Right. So uh, definitely calling is it's an art that is missed now in the day and age. Mm -hmm. Right. Texting, emailing, DMing. Right. So call, call them. So Soraya, you have a system for calling your leads. You said the same thing. So how do you follow up with your leads and what's the time frame for that? Sure. So I just started, you know, my, I'm still learning. Right. So lead generation is really new to me. So I do a lot of online advertising like Facebook, Google ads, things like that. And I try to call them within the hour. Within um, one hour, she told me. She, so once she gets the lead, she's on the phone with them. It's a phone call. It's not a text or an email. Right. She lets them hear her voice within one hour of getting that lead. So I have a drip that automatically texts them and emails them if they sign up through my website or through anything. And it's just like an introduction, thanking them, you know, hey, this is who I am, blah, blah, blah. Expect a call from me within the hour. So that kind of puts pressure on me. Like I told them I was going to do this. Yeah. So now I have to call them. So I try to do that right away. Okay. And Kahe, how are you following up with your leads? Um, definitely KV Core. And um, thank you so much, Kelly, for just helping out all the way with that. Um, that definitely helps. For me, honestly, I would hate calling people. <laughs> I was just like so shy and I didn't even know what I was talking about, you know? So Everybody I, has a different system. Yeah, I hated calling people. I would just either text message them. Um, yeah, pretty yeah. much text. So, Through text. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, there's success all around. So it works, whatever works for, for you is, okay, that's great. Um, so we say, you know, there was something actually, Lonnie, that you said to me. In order to be successful when you made the choice to go into real estate, it wasn't just what you were going to do, but you had to eliminate some things in your life. And they weren't necessarily negative things. It was just taking a look at how full her life was and making a choice to eliminate what wasn't going to serve her or what was not going to open up her business. What was that for you? That's a tough one. Uh, so it was a tough decision. So for, I would say, about 12 or 13 years, I was the head coach of uh, Kealakehe High School softball team. Uh, excuse me, I was a part of that, and for the past six years, I was the head coach. Um, but it consumed me. About six months out of the year, I was at the field. And it's a lot of work, right? It's a lot of work that people don't understand unless you actually do it. So in order for me to move forward full time, and that's what I was doing, um, in real estate, I really had to, I had to choose. And it was a hard decision, because uh, we touch lives of the youth, but at the same time, that was my full time job now. You know, that was my, that was my gig. So I had to make sure I invested enough time uh, to be successful, and I had to eliminate that. And you invested the time, you, the time was there, the yeah. contacts were there, the people were there, it was in your past. And we hear about, we do, we have to get rid of toxic relationships, we have to eliminate things that aren't working for us, and sometimes we have to make a tough decision to get rid of things in our life that um, are special to us, but it's time to move on. And don't ask me about that, you guys, because I suck at this. <laughs> like, I can do that, oh my God! Anyway, but it's important, and I think that it was a great choice for you. Yeah, it definitely was because I just, for me, leaving my nine to five job, I entered a new phase in life. And so I really need to um, take a look at what I had to eliminate. And it, it, sucked. it really sucked that I had to do it. But I'm glad I did it. And there is more than enough capable people out there that can fill that shoes and pass that on to the youth. So I was okay with it. Okay. Um, so I have to ask the question. Personally, and we'll start with Soraya, what is your secret? And you said to me, nope, I don't have a secret, no, but you've mentioned a couple of things, and do you want to talk about that? Yeah. I personally don't think there is any secret, to be honest. Um, 
you just gotta do stuff. Like, yeah. like, like Dylan said, I am up for anything. Like Dylan will say, oh, blah, blah does this. I'm like, okay, I'll try it. Let's see if it works. And I just do that constantly because I'm so new. I just don't think that I've found, you know, what I'm really, really good at. And so for me, it's a way to explore this industry, to learn more about it. So I'll just do anything. Right, I have it written down. I have no secret, but you just have to, in all caps, do something every day when you're new. Just do something. And she even said, I would Google, what do I do as a realtor? <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? In Google. And that's, hey. They give you your license, and that's it. Like, what am I supposed to do? So, trial watch, and error. I watch, um, billion dollar listing and I would actually call Dylan and be like hey is this legal can I do this and then I try to do what they do on the show because I have no idea what I'm supposed to do yeah Kahaya, what what is the secret for you and I think that yours is a little bit more personal or um, yeah definitely so the secret to my success is um, just knowing my identity um, having a strong foundation in what I believe and what I value, um, being or having the opportunity to helping other people, um, providing service to them, not only in real estate, but in life as well. Awesome. And Lonnie, yours was specific too. You kind of built your foundation, your secret. You talk a lot about um, filling the cup. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, so. I've done, you name it, I've sold Avon, I've done Melaleuca, I've done all these different businesses, right, that, you know, you just try to figure out a way to get out of that corporate. And so, I've, yeah, the secret to, to my success really starts at home. It has nothing to do with business, uh, it's family, right, it's family, because there are support. And so I talked to Ali the other day about uh, prior to real estate, uh, we did, uh, last time I talked about filling the cup, right? Um, knowing what my support system needs in order so that they could be fulfilled so that I can do what I do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So when my family is, their cup is full, mm -hmm. um, they actually help drive my business because they let me do what I gotta do, right? And so it took me a little bit of time. My husband and I are gonna celebrate 18 years of marriage in a couple of weeks, so if you see him, remind him. <laughs> they need reminders sometimes. But um, yeah, so it took us some time to really figure that out because it was like pulling hair, you know? It was like, what is gonna make you happy? And all I had to do was ask him, <laughs> what makes you happy? You know, what fills your cup? And after we figured out, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the five love languages, right? Once we figured that out, I was like, shit. Yeah. It only took me that one question. <laughs> and now I'm like, I can fill you up fast, <laughs> right? So, so you can let me do what I got to do. But Lonnie, right. tell them what it is that yeah. you guys, what does he like to do? What do you guys do together? <laughs> We're dying to know. It's not like that. What is it, Lonnie? So my husband, my husband is an avid hunter. They go right? hunting so together, you guys. They go hunt together. And honestly, we don't even have to catch a dang thing. We go into the mountain, we hike, we find things, you know, we even just spend the time together full. I mean, I, sometimes I'm even in the mountain with my phone in my pocket. <laughs> Don't lie, you guys do it all the time. <laughs> but I let him know, hey, I'm in a transaction. I'm waiting for this call. I, so if you give him the heads up, when I pull my phone out, he knows, hey, she's got to do what she's got to do, right? But at the same time, filling up his cup, oh man, I can go for days. Once they're filled, they push me. It's like, it's like fueling your tank, right? I'm giving the gas, feeding the gas, they can let me do what I gotta do. Yeah. So that's really actually my secret sauce. 
and it's she puts it on her calendar. It could be weekly, every couple of weeks. She puts it on the calendar. I, I time block it. Time block, fill her husband's cup, go hunting. Yep. And then when everybody else at home is happy, like she said, it's fueling her business. All, the rest, because all of us have that guilt, right? Where I'm like, oh, my kids, uh, my husband, don't get me started. Lord, I need, <laughs> I gotta go hunting. <laughs> You can eat it and shoot something. Oh, so bad. <laughs> you need to shoot something, Ali. Yes. <laughs> so it's just a great reminder. It's a great reminder. It's part of all of our lives. But if we are supported at home, we are supported in our business because our business is our family's business as well, right? Sure. So that's sure. a, a really great reminder. Thank you, Lonnie. And then the calendar, though. All of you guys use the calendar. Soraya, can you talk about um, your use of, is it Google Calendar or what are you using? I'm an iPhone person. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, great. Yeah, I uh, I time block everything. Just like Lonnie, um, my husband, he loves to go to the beach. So okay. if we don't go there for a while, like together, he kind of, you know, gets like, oh, I gotta go, you know. So mm -hmm. um, that also supports us in general, kind of what you're saying. Um, but yeah, I time block everything. If it's not on my calendar, it's not happening. Um, I will time block free time, which is insane, but I do do that so that I can have like time if call, calls or whatever happens, like I have time for that too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kaya, are you using a calendar and yeah, doing anything? Yeah, so I, I use um, Google Calendar. Um, I try to fill it up as much as I can and definitely go by what it says. Um, I'll just dig in through the whole week, Monday to Friday, 8 to 2, and have the weekend for family time. Okay. And so routine-wise, all of you are doing something a little bit different, but you have your week planned out. And um, Soraya, what do you do either the morning of or the night before every day? Do you remember what oh, you told yeah. me? Um, I text myself. I, I, you know, I listen to Tom Ferry kind of like most of you guys probably are. And there was, he had a guest who was saying that he does that. He'll send himself text messages the night before the day of so that he knows his own goals. Well, and, yeah, what are you texting? Um, what I have to do, like, hey, I have to talk to these people, touch base with them, or I have to talk to this inspector. Whatever I have going on, I will text it. That way, if I don't have service wherever I am, I have that with me. Okay, so she's got her list. She's referring to her own text message every day. It's her to-do list, mm -hmm. and it's an accountability hack for her. And Lonnie, what do you have going? Um, what does your living room look like? <laughs> okay, well, I live in Ocean View, so I don't get to the office every day. So I created an office in my living room. I have, like I said, I have adult children, so, you know, anything goes in my house. I don't have to keep anything, you know, nice and neat, but I have two whiteboards. I use Google calendars um, as well. If it's not on the calendar, like Dylan said, it's not happening. Um, so I try to fill it up as much as I can, but I'm, I like writing. I like writing things down, and I'm a total color coder. I love that, too. Uh, so I have two pretty good sized dry erase boards okay. that I've taped out one in a form of a calendar. Okay. And then the other one has kind of like columns. So I put down like, this is my showings I have for today. These are my active buyers. This is the buckets that I'm dropping them in like, you know, Audrey at Zillow had, you know, taught us. Um, so that's basically what my living room looks like with okay. all of my hundreds of colors of dry erase markers. So we all work from home and you've got two massive whiteboards in your living room and yeah. you're looking at it every day and you're every adjusting day. it and you have your client list on your whiteboard every day. Yep. And um, Kahea, you, you're up and at it. You go to the gym every morning from six to seven, right? So I know that you are athletic and need to be on your feet and I know Tell me about your workspace. You work mostly from home. Um, yeah, I definitely work from home. Um, I'll start starting the kitchen, um, just make my way to the office. I cannot sit down. Um, I have to keep on standing or walking around. Um, towards the end of the day, I kind of stay away from the kitchen because I'll look at the dishes and be like, oh my God, I have to wash dishes. But I try to keep home and work separate sometimes. And um, most of your work is done standing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Soraya, what about you? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got a different scene on what their work yeah. looks like at home. 
Go ahead. My TV is my screen. <laughs> so. She has a massive TV screen that she's hooked into we on have, the couch. Yeah, so I have a, that's where I work. My couch is my work space. Um, I don't write. I'm like so against that. So for me, it's like everything's <laughs> online. I don't want to see a paper. Like uh -huh. if, here I'm taking notes, but I will take pictures of those and they will be online. So that's kind of what I do. What is, um, what's a resource that you could not live without in that first year, Lonnie? Some resource that you wouldn't be able to do this? Uh, it, it took a while, but one of my resources is our five at five call. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it took me a long time to get up at five mm -hmm. every morning. That's like, yeah. And the five at five is an accountability call where yes. a lot of our team can get on and yeah. it's, it's literally five minutes, you guys? I don't, okay. Yeah. And yeah, that's why I said um, I can get up at five. Yeah, it's hard, but I'm literally on on it for five minutes, and you know we're we're done. We share positive quotes, positive thoughts, gratitudes. Um, there's some days, yeah, I go back to sleep because <laughs> because sleep is important. Um, True. But but be. Since I started doing the five at five, I actually, more than, maybe 75, maybe more than that, I actually stay up and I actually get more of my personal things done. Yeah. I'm like, not even crack a dawn yet, I'm cleaning my house. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, only because I know if, like Kahe said, I'm working from eight to five or eight to four, whatever the case is, um, I don't wanna stop during my work day to clean the dishes to clean my counters, because I know it needs to be done. Fold the clothes that's been sitting on the couch for a couple weeks, you know? Yeah. Um, but I try to take that time, and I, I do not check my phone, I do not open my computer until 8 o'clock. 7.59, because yeah. you'd be late if you're at That's right. Block. Okay. And Soraya, you talked about um, a CRM as being a tool that you could not live without. Yeah. And you take your KV Core very seriously. Can you talk about the amount of note-taking that you take in your KV Core and that, how that's helpful to you? I think kind of like what Ashley was talking about. I mean, I live in my um, KV Core. I check the activity of all my clients in there to see what they're browsing about. Um, I do take a lot of notes every time we meet, like their, you know, their pet name, breed, whatever it is, like all that stuff in there, because I didn't think that I would get to a point where I forget, but thank God I am, but so it's really nice, but it also has this double-edged sword where, like yesterday I got a call from Shannon, I was like, hi, I don't know who you are, <laughs> no idea who you are. Yay, so, congratulations. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. But it means you I got live, some clients. I definitely live in my CRM, and um, if somebody looks at something too many times, you know, I'll call them. Um, so you asked what are the top three things. Yeah, you know, what else? The CRM, transaction manager, because mm -hmm. I hate filling out all these little bubbles. Like We're hearing like, repeats all day long, you guys. So if that. more than one person is saying it, it must be true. A transaction manager working your CRM. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to hear it 30 times before we dig in and make it true in our business. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and your phone, which we can all agree with, yes. right? My phone is my third thing because I take it everywhere. Um, you can do so much from your phone. Like I do videos of little houses and then I use CapCut <coughs> and it's all edited in like 30 seconds and then I can put it on social media. I mean, you can do so much on there. I'm probably not as tech savvy as Justice, because she's, she's like a Gen Z, she can do everything, but you know, I try and you can do a lot on there. Okay. Kahea, what, could you, what resource could you not live without? Um, definitely Jesus. Um, he definitely, <laughs> he guides me to be the best, best version of myself that I can be every day, so that for sure. Um, second would be my phone, of course. I've got my Bible on there, I got my, I track my family on there, my calendar, everything's on there. I got the team chat, um, and three would be my family. Yeah. Yeah. So we're getting close. Let's see if we are missing anything. Soraya, you kind of talked a little bit that now you're finding your niche, which is really cool. You come from a background in engineering, mm -hmm. and you also bought 
condos and did some investing. Yeah. So now, because that's who you are, you are not, the, the engineering part, she's not afraid to dig in and talk numbers. Yeah. Because it's who she is and she already knows it. So we gotta find what it is that we're good at. Mm -hmm. So you wanna talk about it, sure. how your business is going that way a little bit? Yeah, it's, it's starting to become that. So the more I meet people, you know, and you know, um, Hawaii is a destination. So a lot of people save up their whole lives to live here. They want to do investments. Um, and then when they buy a house, they have all this equity. So then they realize that they can buy something else that will generate money. And so because I've done that, it's starting to become a thing where people are asking me about it. And I can tell them firsthand <laughs> that, you know, the pains and the scars and everything that I've learned, but also the successes. So it's been really, really helpful to have that background to help others. And Kahea, can I ask you a real simple question? How many hours a day do you work? About six hours a day. Six hours. And you have kids that are younger, and you have a church, and you're out there doing all kinds of things. So you are managing your time, but you're setting aside as a first, in her first year, six hours a day to do real estate. Soraya, how many hours a day are you doing it? Like 10. Okay. And Lonnie? Um, I work eight hours, but one yeah. thing I learned from corporate, I take my 15 minute breaks <laughs> and I take my one hour lunches because I'm entitled. <laughs> so six hours, eight hours, eight hours, nothing that we've said here is like rocket science or something crazy. These women in this first year, they just went to work. They opened their computer. They learned their CRM. I will tell you that they're the ones that are showing up to every training. We get on our weekly meetings and they're always there and wins and gratitudes. It's like, oh, I put another one in escrow. I put another two in escrow. And I'm looking at these women like, what? What? <laughs> Who is that in the first year? Because they're showing up and they're like, like Soraya said, she's Googling, what do I do as a realtor? <laughs> So it's just putting in the time and it's putting in the work. And I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see what happens in the future for our team with you ladies. Thank you so much. Woo.